we're just under the tap room of Sterling Pig Brewery here in Media, Pennsylvania. This bar is kind of the brainchild of Luke Bonyo and head brewmaster Brian McConnell. They've done a really good job of blending award-winning craft beer with amazing barbecue. All right, we're gonna leave the bar behind for a second. We're gonna come up here to the restaurant where they serve some of the best barbecue in the area. Look to my right, you see the nice little cozy, just kind of seating area there. Uh, if you go off to the left, you've got the kitchen, you've got this giant wood-burning stove. It's gorgeous, um, but we're here for beer. So right now we're gonna go talk to the brewmaster. How's it going, Brian? Ah, pretty well, how are you? Good, 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 good. Uh, so guys, we're here at the Sterling Pig Brewery. This is the partner and head brewer, Brian McCall. Yeah, nice meeting you too. So uh, I'm gonna ask you some questions. Before we do that though, I've got a tall, dark, handsome drink in front of me. What is this? This is our uh, Baltimore Pike Porter. I mean, it's fairly early, early in the day, so it's a, a pretty good breakfast beer. A lot of roast coffee character. A lot of chocolate, uh, fairly robust, still relatively low alcohol. It's a, um, seemed fitting for the Yo, Oh, yes, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah, and um, take it some more. <laughs> <laughs> mm. So, what drew you into brewing in the first place? Interest, really. I, uh, I got out of college in the, uh, in, in the early 90s and uh, had an opportunity to work in a brewery when my then girlfriend, now wife, went to Peace Corps. And uh, didn't make any money, but it was a lot of fun. Never really thought it would amount to a career, but the market changed, sure. and uh, craft beer, beer took off, and uh, it did evolve into a uh, into a career with which you could you could sustain a lifestyle. How did Sterling Pig come along? So myself and uh, my partner uh, Luik were introduced by a mutual friend. I, at the time, was a, a regional brewer for, a, for a, another company and wanted to open a place and wanted to be here. And he's a, a restaurateur locally and knows what he's doing in, in, in that capacity. So it really worked well. It, uh, we kind of meshed together in, in uh, 2014 and then uh, uh, signed a lease in late 2014 and then opened in, in uh, 2015. What do you think sets Sterling Pig apart from, say, the other brewer? I think what we try to do is uh, is use really high quality ingredients, uh, make good, solid, accessible product. Yeah, and, and just uh, uh, just just have a spectrum of, of, of styles. Beer's been around forever. It's you know it, it, people people reinventing it to me doesn't make a ton of sense. So ours are, are fairly classic styles using good ingredients, and we just try to stay out of the way. Sure. You know, just just basically you know let the ingredients show themselves. You're going to beer because you already like beer. There's no reason that throw a whole new different twist on it to a way that's like doesn't make any sense. There may be, yeah, but, but, sure. but that's not what we do. Yeah. You know, no, that's, yeah, that's not what we do. You have a lot of artistic kind of freedom with the beer. How do you decide, like when you sit down, you're like, okay, we're gonna make a new IPA or a new, like how to infuse that, what flavor profiles you're gonna go for? Like what's the thought process behind that? It's kind of a, a function of, a, of, of personal preference, sure. uh, knowledge of ingredients from working in the industry for 20 years and what I think people will drink. Um, I try to keep, in terms of the styles, I try to keep a spectrum of styles available so we have something for everyone. If I were to pick a favorite beer to make personally, it would be a Pils, and we tinker with that on a regular basis. Our, our, our show is pretty consistent, but we do have rotating Pilsners, and we're always, always playing with them. I do them slightly differently from other people in that I use uh, North American hops. I use uh, Hollertau Derivatives, which is a, a, a German, Hollertau is a German noble type hop, which is traditional for Pils but I use a Mount Hood variety, and I, I cycle in some Liberty um, and some Crystal in, in those, which are all Hollertau derivatives, but they're grown in the Pacific Northwest. I've just found that I can get higher quality uh, hops that are a little distinctive, like uh, Mount Hood, for instance, has a, it, it tastes the noble, spicy character that Hollertau has, but has a little bit of mint, which is really interesting. I do use European malt. It's hard, like Pilsner for me, the distinctive uh, backbone character of it is Pilsner malt, and I use high quality German Pilsner malt for that. It turns out that's the one you when you won the World Beer Cup with the show. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. Apparently, you know what you're doing with yeah, yeah, yeah. it. Lightning in a bottle, you know. Hey, <laughs> you know? Take all the credit for it. Mm. What's your favorite part about beer? Well, the gratification of it. Basically, the uh, taking ingredients and 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 morphing them into uh, a product in the, in the course of a day, and, and you know having people basically come in and seeing people drinking the product and enjoying it. You know, hopefully. Uh, well, that's the, it, it, it wouldn't be as enjoyable if they weren't enjoying it. But it, there is something that we've done every given day. And I saw it, you were talking about it a little bit. You got a new canner. Yeah, we did. It's cool. Can I go and take a look at that? Absolutely. Sweet. All right, so we are here on the floor ah, looking crap. at the canner. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> and it got stuck. <laughs> 
there, I guess. <laughs> Serendipitous so timing. How often does that happen? <laughs> What's that? So how often does that happen? You gotta... uh, really not that often. With the, we, we run 16-ounce and 12-ounce cans on this. With okay. the 12s, it's pretty, uh, it pretty much runs itself. With the 16s, they're a little more top-heavy, and, sure. and uh, it's a little trickier. But uh, yeah, maybe that's the second time it's happened during this run. So basically, that's a twist rinse here. The cans come in uh, sterile and uh, basically go through that. That's just uh, um, filtered water that uh, rinses out the cans as they get flipped upside down. So you, you can see this kind of roller coaster looking mechanism flips the cans, uh, delivers them to the rinser, which rinses them four at a time, and then that delivers them to the fill heads. So basically the, the four first ones are, are purge uh, heads. They basically send CO2 into the cans to purge them out. Yeah, yeah. And then it goes through, this is an inline canner. It goes through and, uh, um, and, uh, and fills them after that. The, the four like uh, uh, PVC heads that you see, the plastic ones, are, uh, are fill heads. And it slaps the lid on, smashes it in, and pushes it out. Exactly right. Look at that. Yeah, yeah. And then a conveyor down to the bottom, gets a, a day code on it, uh, and then gets packaged over on the other end. And, uh, so I noticed a spot over here. This is where you're kind of making sure. If there are any imperfections in the cans, we're getting uh, we're getting shrink sleeve cans. But you can see here there's a little dent in the uh, sure. in the rim. If there is, they won't see. Yeah. So these are the casualties. Gotcha. And uh, my clever uh, neighbor, who's uh, John, who's uh, up on the ladder right now, <laughs> brought in a reclamation uh, system of, of growlers. <laughs> so the ones that aren't seeming, he's pouring into the. Uh, if you can't see, there's three he's growlers. Pouring into the growlers. <laughs> <laughs> so. Uh, so I'm actually kind of happy to see that. It's, it's a hard job, right, John? Someone's got to do <laughs> it. It pays me to so. waste it. And yeah, you caught us on a uh, on an interesting day. This is the third time we've run this machine, so it's uh, it's fun to see. You know, no, it's fun it's, to see in action. This is amazing. Yeah, it's cool. Thanks a lot, guys, for spending the day with us here at Sterling Pig. Uh, we got to see some of the beer being made. We got to try some of the delicious barbecue. And of course, we got to try some of the beer. Um, I'm going to finish off here with some of the stuff that I haven't had yet. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this, like the video, comment below, see what you want us to do, uh, share it with your friends. Until next time, I'm Andrew from Craft Draft. Cheers, you guys.